What is going on ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to Auto Auction Rebuilds. We are back in my garage at home, which is a rarity. We usually don't make videos here. We're usually making them down at AR headquarters, but today I drove a different car home. I wanted to see how it would do. I've never taken it on any type of a long drive. And uh, after driving it home, I determined we need to clean it out. It's a repossession 2016 Chevy Impala that I got for ridiculous cheap money. I mean, we're talking small money on this car. I think I paid $6,000 for it. And again, it's a repossession. When I opened it in the last video, we found all kinds of stuff piled in the trunk. There's shoes, some Jordans are in there. I've had several people emailing me asking me if they could have the Jordans. I'm throwing everything away, guys. It is disgusting. There's a box of Bojangles chicken rotting in the back seat. And it looks like the car was probably used as a drug mule. So before I drive any further with my family in it, I want to clean it out. But before I can even get to cleaning it out, I have to make it through my cluttered garage. I have a lot going on in this shop, guys, including a video that I'm working on. But I'm going to take a couple, three weeks to actually get the video made. This is my new 80 volt. Uh, it's basically a 43 horsepower um one two three five motor uh electric mower uh brushless motors all the way around two drive motors three motors for the uh deck super cool because there's no oil there's no transmission fluid there's no belts no hoses there's literally nothing but a quiet lawnmower with six blades for cross cutting behind that is my uh cub cadet Ultima ZT150. This one is a Z54LI because it has lithium ion batteries. So stay tuned for this if you're interested in electric mowers. You have three suitcase batteries back here you can literally pull out, but you've got those batteries. Then you've got batteries over here as well. You've got another battery over here as well. Um, and it all plugs into a supercharger. You don't have to take each battery out. You just plug your supercharger into the port, kind of like a Tesla and it charges everything up at the same time. So I'm gonna try this out. It's a very expensive mower. This was, uh, I think, $79.99. It was $8,000. In contrast, this, uh, this really solid um, Cub Cadet with the Kawasaki 23 horse motor ran me, I think, all in $4,500 with the mulching kit and everything. So definitely curious, but I'm kind of tired of carrying gas around and with a, a gas mower, you've got, well, air filter, you've got fuel filter, you've got oil and oil filter, you've also got your uh, hydrostatic transmission fluid, you have belts, there's, there's a lot of moving components to one of these and these require yearly service, uh, spark plugs, with something like this, you don't have to worry about all that and they give you a five year warranty on the mower itself and the batteries. And because I'm jumping on the electric bandwagon here, at least temporarily to see how it all goes, this is Charlie, my push mower that I've had for 10 years, and it's finally giving up the ghost. So I'm replacing Charlie with this Hart 40 volt brushless lawnmower as well. This is a 21 inch self propelled. Here's something very interesting though. Charlie over here, made of metal. This, we haven't named this yet. Maybe we'll call it RoboCop or something. This is plastic, guys. Pla yeah, plastic. And uh, under the hood of this one, there's your dual batteries, two 40 volt batteries. These are both six amp hour batteries. And you can switch when one battery dies, you just flip that key around and it, it runs the other battery. So yeah, this will uh, this will be an interesting video, I think, but I don't want to make the video prematurely. I definitely want to put that Ryobi through its paces, really put some mow time on it to see how it compares to my Cub Cadet, which I have been using to mow both houses. Each house has over an acre of land. So you're looking at uh, over two acres every time I mow. And I'm definitely curious to see how that thing can compete or compare with the Cub Cadet. And if you enjoy, some of you don't, but if you enjoy the bike content, I've got tons more of that coming, including this new awesome, what a name, an awesome scooter. I, I really enjoy these scooters. I haven't tried this one out yet other than just up and down the road here and back. Um, the rest of these bikes, I need to get them all up for sale because I've already filmed all of them. I've got new bikes coming in. So stay tuned for more reviews of that. And I'm looking so forward to not having to carry around these big, heavy 
gas cans and not having to stop with my trailer at the gas station to fill them up just so I can mow my yards. But I know that's not what you're here for. You're here for the 2016 Impala to find out what exactly is in this car. This car is so filthy and it came to me this way. I should have driven the cop car home last night, but this car has been sit oh yeah, this car has been sitting out at AR headquarters basically with all of the stuff in it rotting in the sun in 104 degree weather for probably two weeks at this point and i decided i wanted to drive this car home and just get a better idea of what this car was all about and i'm here to tell you i'm really surprised i'll have to do another video later where we'll really go through like the mechanicals of the car and everything but i'm going to tell you right now i drove it 40 miles last night i cleared I'm, I'm, let me just show you. Let me just show you on the interior, which is going to smell absolutely horrible with the rotting chicken in the back seat. So why don't I open? Why don't, yeah, the chicken is still rotting on the floor in the back, and I found the trunk was full of water. And I'm going to explain to you uh, why that is. The trunk being full of water is a very common issue on these last gen Impalas. And uh, I'll tell you about that here in just a second. But I want you to see, oh, it is hot. Ah, yeah. Um, first of all, this car has an appointment with Brian at the Auto Spa next week. So you're probably wondering why I would clean this car out. Well, it occurred to me, this is a repossession. So there may be stuff still in this car that belong to the last owner, including maybe some illegal substances. And I do want to start driving it around. I want to use it daily. I bought all of these cars so that I could use each of them um, for like a week at a time as a daily driver and then swap them out for the next one. And we'll just kind of put them all in rotation. Um, this one I'm particularly interested in because it has the V6, which is the only engine I would buy this car with. It's got 155,000 miles. It smells like total, total weed on the interior. It smells like pot, real heavy. Um, but the reason I'm mostly interested in this car is because this engine is making it possible to get 30-ish miles a gallon on the highway. And that is absolutely phenomenal. Um, the city mileage is not too bad either. It's, it's in the... Uh, I think it's in the 20s, 29 miles a gallon on the highway. So I drove this as I would normally drive any car last night, and I haven't done any mechanical work to it. The check engine light's on, the TPMS light is on, but let me show you something real quick. Let's clear the trunk. Back tire needs air. Let's turn off the, uh, and the greatest thing ever, the XM radio was left on. <laughs> it's still running under somebody else, but there is, uh, there's your dash right there. Trip A averaged 38.7 miles, and my average fuel economy was 32.3. I kid you not, 32.3 miles a gallon with 157,000 miles on the odometer. And by the way, yes, I was using the air conditioning. <laughs> uh, I'm going to be honest with you, the car that I love the most so far right now is, uh, and I'm kind of torn between the SSR, although I haven't gotten to drive it because it doesn't need mechanical work, the SSR and the Police Interceptor Ford Taurus Twin Turbo. The Ford Taurus is like my go-to car. I love that car and I drive it everywhere all the time, but there's a downside to it, and that is it gets 19 to 20 miles a gallon on average. If I can drive this, which by the way is a very big, very comfortable car, um, and I can pull 32 miles a gallon on the highway out of this and 20s in the city, this car, hands down, uh, this, could be, this could become a more permanent member of uh, auto auction rebuilds. Um, and maybe eventually someday I will upgrade to an LTZ slash Premier model. Um, that would be nice. I've heard they got nice heated, cooled seats and all of that stuff. So I, I'm very interested and uh, using this car for a little while and seeing if maybe an Impala is really the direction I want to go with this. Now we're gonna start cleaning this out. It is, it is pretty nasty inside. They even included some gloves for us, which was really nice. Um, and some soy sauce. That's really good too. Um, I'm gonna go, ow, it is, it is hot in here. I'm gonna go grab a trash can and we'll, we'll start kinda going through this car and yeah, cleaning 
all of that out. And uh, I think we'll start with the worst of the worst here in the trunk. All right, so let's just get started. I, I have some gloves, but I'm not gonna use them. I really hate wearing gloves, if you know what I mean. Never really been a glove type of guy myself. Uh, I like to take my chances. So obviously paint and paint brushes. Um, this car does have an appointment with the Auto Spot LLC. Brian is willing to take on this disaster, but he told me, he said, if this car has had all this paint just spilt in it and it's dried in this heat, he said there is a very real possibility he won't be able to make it perfect, but he's gonna do the best that he can. And I know he will, he always does a great job. And every time he tells me that, uh, you know, he can't promise that it's gonna come out good, it always comes out better than expected. So the Auto Spa, Brian, I should say, and, and, and his team over there, they like to under promise and over deliver. And there's a lot of companies, a lot of products out there that over promise and under deliver, uh, politicians included. Um, but over there at the auto spa, man, that guy is great. His team is great. They'll tell you like it is. They give you real expectations, but they always want to under promise you, but over deliver so that when you see the car, when they're done, you're really, really satisfied with the results. So far, not seeing much. I couldn't bring this car to him with all this crap in it. You know, I feel bad. Like the least I can do is clean this crap out of it. And if there's anything, not legal in here. The last thing I want to do is bring something to him that could have illegal substances in it and, and then have him on the hook for, you know, who knows what. So I decided to go ahead and just clean this out myself. Plus I am starting to daily drive it. I can't even believe that I drove this home like this. I have no idea what's in it. I think these are the shoes that everybody was wanting. I can't tell you how many people emailed me asking for these shoes and I don't know why these things are, well, they're destroyed. Um, I don't think anybody cares about Air Maxes, but I can't believe that somebody did this to this car. This is really, who does this, man? I guess who does this is people that aren't going to, uh, that aren't gonna pay their car note, right? Who cares? You're, you're using it for work and you'll just abuse it until it's time to get rid of it. A popcorn ceiling scraper. Interesting. I didn't even know that tool existed. I always wondered how you got popcorn off the ceilings in uh, in houses. So there are a lot of nails in here. We got, oh, there's something really that's wet and that's really oily, really greasy. Oh boy. Well, the good news is, so far anyway, I'm not seeing anything crazy in the trunk. I will definitely have to uh, have to vacuum this out. I don't know if I might have to take this back to AAR headquarters. I don't have a vacuum here that I think is capable of, uh, yeah, of, of sucking up nails. <laughs> I've got a pretty good shop vac down at AAR headquarters, which could easily handle all of these nails and stuff. I'll get everything out that I can by hand, but other than that, I wonder what all, what is all this? Oh, a bunch of mud. Yeah, that stuff is, is long gone, man. Long gone. So far, though, I don't see anything illegal. Lots of sandpaper. I mean, this, this is something you need a truck for. You don't use a Chevy Impala, a luxurious car like this, for this type of cleaning, guys. Anybody thirsty? There's a water bottle, some juice. Yeah, so far, everything in here is just, it's like, it's really normal painter stuff, you know? Um, but we might find some more interesting stuff on the inside of the car. And my thing is, if it was repossessed with all of these people's stuff in it, there's tons of materials in here, right? They obviously were not expecting the car to get taken. So it is a little concerning as to what we might find in there. Since we've pretty much got the trunk emptied at this point. I think it's safe to say we're not gonna find anything illegal back here. So I'll finish this up and we'll come back and look at the interior. All right, I've got most of this cleaned out as best as I can with what I got, but look at the water down here. This, this is full of water. The spare tire, 
has got water all over it too. Spare tire is full air and it looks like it's never seen the ground. It still has the stripes, the painted on stripes, but so much water under here. And I'm gonna show you real quick what causes that on these last gen Impalas and you will suffer from this problem. Absolutely, this is, every single one of them is gonna have this problem. So you might as well address it before it starts. It comes from the taillights, these housings right here believe it or not. Uh, I know it doesn't, doesn't make a whole lot of sense, but number one, you see all the dirt and, and stuff collected here? Yeah, well, that's not helping things any, but there are weather seals on the backside of these taillights. Well, the water runs from the windows and you'll see it runs into this trunk right here. Well, it runs down and number one, a bunch of garbage here will cause it to start blocking up and it could then run into the trunk, but it's not the seal. You're probably thinking it's the seal. It's not the seal. It's 99% of the time gonna be the gasket on the backside of these taillights. And here's the worst part. You can't just pop this cover off and get these out. You actually have to drop the bumper. You've got to take the bolt out of this side, the bolt out of the other side. You got to take these covers off. You got to unbolt the tail lights. You got to drop the bumper down just a hair to get these tail lights out. And then you have to replace the gasket. You got to pull the gasket off, clean up all of your surfaces and put a new gasket on. So the water from rain and car washes literally runs through the tail lights. You might even be able to see it back here a little bit. Maybe not. It, I really don't have the time to pull all of this out right now, but we'll take it out. We'll do a dedicated video on, on getting these replaced, how you do it. But if you have water in the trunk of your Impala, and eventually you will, if you don't yet, you will, you might as well take care of it now. It's not a big deal to pop this back bumper off. You don't have to take it all the way off, but you do have to take this panel right here out, pull these covers down, unbolt things from the side. And uh, once you put new gaskets on, as long as you cleaned all of your surfaces up, you'll be good to go. And you shouldn't have to worry about it for a long time to come. Um, this is as good as I could get the trunk. Uh, it's better than it was. So we're, uh, we're halfway there, I suppose. Now let's Let's see what we can find on the interior. I really like this interior. I know I know it's not a luxury car, but I mean, it really does have some premium feels to it. You got soft touch up here, and this is just a, a one LT. So it's a step up above the LS, but this is definitely not like a fully loaded by any stretch of the imagination. And lots of soft touch, and, and it's, it's really pretty decent in here. Um, it just smells like, it smells like, <laughs> I don't know, it smells like soy sauce, it smells like rotten Bojangles chicken, like literally, there, there's rotting chicken in here. Uh, and it definitely smells like all of that and more. What is this, some air freshener that's sitting in here? What is this, smoke odor limiter? That didn't work. I'm just just here to tell you, that did not work. Uh, it's sticky and, and nasty. Look, we got, we got gummy bears down here. Well guys, I had to, go in the house the GoPro overheated on me as it does this is why I never record in 4k if you're gonna be doing anything in the heat 4k just doesn't work man it doesn't work and I, I, I hate doing 1080p I love doing high quality videos for you guys um, but the GoPro just it's like it doesn't allow it um, you can clearly see there's been a lot of uh, a lot of smoking back here and not of the cigarette variety you know what I mean this car, Brian's got his work cut out for him when it comes to getting the smell out of here. It smells like, what does it smell like, Nick? Pretty bad. It's pretty, he, pretty, he doesn't know what it smells like because he's, he's not in that kind of stuff. But uh, yeah, it, it smells really, really bad. So I'm continuing on. And thankfully, so far, I haven't found anything that is concerning in the car definitely nothing illegal which was a big concern of mine but here's where things get here's where things get really bad all right yeah that is all um it's i don't even know how to clean this out but it's a stew of different sauces zesty honey mustard there's all kinds of it's it's just bad guys that's all i can tell you is it's it's just bad i didn't even know this but you've got usb ports and a line input down there oh that's nice um 
I don't know how I'm going to get that out. And then in here, it's just more of the same. And in this little tray here, more of the same. Now, like I said, I'm not here trying to clean this whole thing out for Brian. He really does enjoy uh, cleaning out these cars. So I may leave... I'll bet a lot of the smell is coming from there, though. I'll bet it is. What is this, a cigarette lighter adapter? Yeah, power outlet for a cigarette lighter. Um, I just hate to give him this car with so... It's just it's so nasty. It's... Uh, there. Oh, there, there's part of the smell. You got stems, seeds, and sticks down in there, man. See, that's something I got to get out. Because uh, even though it's unlikely I'd get arrested for some of that, you know, especially since I have the dealer tag and I can show that I literally just purchased the car. I, I doubt that I'm going to go to jail over some minor stuff in the car. But my thing is, why risk it, right? Like, why do we want to risk it? I'm going to move this seat up a little bit. And uh, good Lord, I need to bring that garbage can over here. All right, well, let's see what else we got in here. I'm really shocked that I haven't found anything uh, illegal in this car yet. I <laughs> I thought for sure we'd find some. I mean, technically, I guess technically we did because all those little, ow, ah, okay. Those pennies are exceptionally hot. Um, the stem seeds and sticks technically are not legal. Uh, like we got some maybe swishers or something like that let's see what we got down here food more rotting food rotting coffee oh wow what is this oh that is i don't know what that is that's disgusting oh man it's like sauces melting all over the floor nice Hand sanitizer, though, because, of course, you want to stay clean, right? <laughs> you got to stay clean, guys. Uh, what is that old saying? Cleanliness, cleanliness is next to godliness. I don't think these people have any idea what that meant. Honestly, I don't. Um, what is this? More tobacco. And more uh, sauces. These people loved their sauces. For vaping, vaping what exactly? I couldn't tell you. Uh, a headlight? Sure. A spare headlight never hurt anybody. Oh, what is this? Parodontex? Parodontex? I don't know. I, I, don't, uh, I don't want anything to do with anything in this car. Like, nothing. I just want all of this crap out so that we can use it. And hopefully enjoy it. What is it? Oh, ah, some burnt paper. You guys already know. You know what that is. Don't come sifting through my garbage because you're going to find all kinds of crap in here. People think I'm a nasty slob person, man. Let's take a look in this seat, too. Remember, somebody cut this under there. There's nothing. But somebody had cut this, obviously, to hide, to stash stuff so i don't see anything in there that's good news let's pull this up a tad so that there's room in the back seat i don't know i don't know what to do look at the paint all over this i hope he can get some of this out i mean it's not the end of the world if he can't i just need it clean but uh I gotta find something to scrape all this out i can't be driving around with all this crap in this car so i have an idea i think there's a rubber uh, thing down in here, and I think this goes here too. So I'm glad it's still got that, but I think there's a rubber deal down here that we could maybe, oh yes, please. I need to, can I get this whole thing out as one? Oh yes, yes, yes. Oh wow. I've got this all over my, all over my hands. This is disgusting. Let me sit you guys here. Let's, oh wow. Oh my, that's, I should throw this away, but I'm gonna try to clean it instead. <laughs> I'm gonna try to say, look at this. Oh, that's, uh, I'm gonna get as much of this off as I can, and then I'm gonna clean it. 
Uh, my fiance is gonna kill me if she finds out, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna clean this in the kitchen sink. Oh wow. <laughs> this is absolutely disgusting, guys. Okay, we're making progress. I'm gonna throw that away. All right, well, I cleaned that up. It looks a whole lot better. And uh, just for added peace of mind, I'm gonna clean that up too. But here's something, guys. What do you think this is? There were quite a few of these. I saved these three. Like foil? I don't know. They're burnt and green. There's definitely, uh, <laughs> definitely some of that in there too. Now the fun part. I need to try to clean this out. I do have a little bit of cleaner. Like I said, it's just kind of for my own peace of mind. I really, I, I don't want to get in any trouble for anything that might be in this car. So I'll try to clean this stuff out real quick. See if we can make it look a little bit better. So now that I've spent a little time just getting everything out, you can really see all the, sim, the stems, seeds and sticks, ashes. I mean, it's everywhere. It's absolutely everywhere in this car. And my goal is to make those disappear before we go cruising around in it. Guys, I had to go inside and cool down, man. It's, uh, this summer has been brutal. I don't know what it's like where, you, oh great. They just leave, you know, you can't bring the stuff to the porch, you just leave it sitting in the driveway. You know what I mean? Um, whatever, it is what it is, man. You know, they used to bring it all the way up on the porch and sit it there for me, but now they just, uh, they got lazy, I suppose. Look, I cleaned this up, so this can go back in there now. Look how much better this looks. Um, it's still a little dirty. Like I said, I don't want to clean it up too much. You know what I mean? Brian is going to, he's going to be upset that I've already done this much to it, I think. But I definitely, oh, that doesn't close anymore. Hold on. Does that not go there? Help me out here, guys. Maybe this goes here. Ah, that's where that goes. Okay. Yeah. There we go. You know, on these front seats, the more I think about it with the cracking and we got the paint all over that one. If Brian can't get it off, it's really not that big of a deal. Um, and remember this seat is cut as well. You know, how much really would a couple of front seats cost? I wonder, I don't think it would be super expensive to just replace the front seats. And that really might be the better, uh, the better bet there. Look at it. Wow. It's like evaporating right in front of me. Look, there's paint or something all over this too. So sad that people treat cars this way, man. It's a good car, you know, and it'll be a, it'll be an even better car once it's all cleaned up by Brian and his team over there. Like I said, my main goal with this is not actually like cleaning the car. I just want to make sure that as much of the remnants of the illegal substances that were in this thing are out of it because the last thing I need is to get pulled over and be like, hey, I mean, I'm gonna be honest with you guys, the car smells like pot, you know what I mean? It, it, it smells heavy of pot. I don't smoke pot. Nobody in my house smokes pot. You know, I don't have anything against people that do, you know, to each their own. That's your own choice, man. I don't care what you do. Uh, but here's my thing. I just don't, I'm not trying to get pulled over. A cop is going to smell pot in this car and then they have probable cause to make you get out and search it. So the last thing I want to do is get pulled out of the car and have the police find that there was something left in here that, that I missed and end up having that, you know, become something I have to make a YouTube video about being arrested. I'm, I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to do that. Let me finish cleaning this up. And then I think we can uh, we can call this video a wrap. I didn't check in here, did I? There's nothing in there. There's nothing in there either. Okay, good. I think the car is officially cleaned out. Well, I think that's about all I've got. I've definitely made an improvement. I've cleaned everything that I could out as best I could. And I think it's looking a whole lot better now than it did when we started. Brian. I hope you appreciate it. Although I, I know I know him, he's gonna be mad I didn't leave it. He's gonna he's gonna wish I'd left all of that in there for him and his guys to clean out to really make a big difference. But I'm telling you, he's gonna make a huge difference anyway, uh, because this whole car in and out is just it's still filthy. I did everything that I could to make it look better, and uh, oh, now that right there, just don't forget that. <laughs> that's, that's all him, man. 
I might run it through a car, wa a car wash and uh, kind of see what it looks like underneath all that dirt. Or I might just leave it the way it is and let him handle it. Comment below and tell me what you think. I think for, uh, you know, an hour and a half or so of work, just trying to clean this thing up, it came out a lot better. It still smells pretty bad. And then I got one more complaint. Don't you love this? It says this side up, do not lay flat. I promise you it was laid flat and they've got the wrong side up. So it's upside down. And then look at this. The box is broken. The strap's broken. <laughs> um, yeah. Oh, it's ripped all the way through to the bike. So this is probably damaged. I guarantee you this bike is probably damaged. What a shame, man. <laughs> that sucks. Oh well, it is what it is. Now, there is one more thing I want to do to this car. I can't do it today, but uh, I've done a lot of research on this, and from what I've been able to find, it looks like you can add remote start to this car without going to the dealer. You simply program a new fob that has the remote start button on it to the car. You can do it yourself in your driveway. It's not terribly difficult to do, and you don't have to go to the dealer to do it. I had a lot of people saying, you can't just buy a remote. I've watched a ton of YouTube videos, and that's exactly what they did. They bought the remote, programmed it to the car. It's a self-programming thing. You go through a process, program it to the vehicle, and you now have remote start. And I think that's the direction I'm going to go. I'm going to buy the I'm going to buy the remote, and we'll come back in another video and we'll try it out and see if it works. If it works, great. If it doesn't, what did I lose? 20, 30 bucks? Then I'll have to go to the de <laughs> the dealer like you guys said and get it done. But I think you're wrong. Drop a comment below and tell me what you think. If you enjoyed today's video, hit the thumbs up button, comment below, subscribe to the channel if you're not currently subscribed. Until next time, stay safe out there, everybody. I look forward to seeing you all again very soon in the next one.